pattern that I'm working with today is one of my original sewing patterns. It's the Grace panties pattern. And the thing that's a little bit different about this pattern than you'll find with most sewing patterns uh, for underwear or for lingerie is that it's made out of a combination of woven fabrics and a stretch fabric that goes over the hips. So your front and your back portion that you're going to cut out of a woven fabric, like this silk charmeuse here, you actually cut it on the bias. So it still maintains quite a bit of stretch, though it's not as stretchy as say a jersey or that kind of fabric. So they're a little different. They have a real vintage feel to them. And they're great because they let you really think outside the box as far as your fabrics go, which I really love to do. So I've cut everything out. Again, I'm using just a lightweight silk here, and I've done my front and my back in the silk, and then I've used a scallop stretch lace to go over my hips. Um, I've already cut out the gusset out of just some plain cotton, and I've finished this upper edge on my serger. If you don't have a serger, you can leave this edge. It's a knit, so it won't really unravel, or you can use a zigzag stitch to, turn, to uh, finish that edge. So the start of this, is fairly simple, pretty standard. I'm gonna begin with my front piece and I'm going to be working on this gusset seam. So with the right sides together, I'm going to pin the gusset together. And this is a little bit tricky because you're um, basically having to ease together two opposite curves. So just start by pinning at either end and then work your way in towards the middle, basically. So you can baste this together on your sewing machine if you wish, um, or by hand, or you can just go ahead and then layer your gusset lining so the right side of your lining is facing the wrong side of your panties back, and then pin it in place. If you've never sewn these before, or if you're new to sewing lingerie in general, or if you've got a really slippery fabric, I'd really recommend basting together first. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to do it like this. So using a regular straight stitch on your sewing machine, you're going to sew through all of these layers using a half an inch seam allowance. So from here you have a couple of options. You can serge your seam allowance right back. Um, you can just trim it back really narrow or you can grade your seam allowance and then notch your fabric. And that's what I'm going to do here because I'm working with a really light silk. I don't want the bulk of my seam allowance to be seen through. So I'm going to start by trimming my jersey back about a quarter of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch. Then my next layer gets trimmed back slightly longer. You can use pinking shears um, for this as well. And then I'm going to trim back my final layer so it's just a tad longer than the last. And then I'm going to clip out little triangles and this is going to allow my seam to lay flat when I open it up. Okay, so you can see I've cut little triangles out here. Just make sure you don't snip through your stitching line. And then when we open it up, that gives us a nice curve to that seam without a lot of bulk between our lightweight fabrics. So here's our gusset. It's got a nice encased seam now and you can baste along either side of the leg opening just to keep this lining in place. Um, at this stage, we also are going to add a little bit of elastic around the leg lines, and the elastic is going to act as a stabilizer. It's, you do not, on this pattern, you definitely don't want to pull on the elastic a lot. You don't want to create any gathers or puckers. You just want to stabilize the leg line. 
For stabilizing this leg line with elastic, you have a couple of choices. You can use a decorative elastic, so something with a bit of a decorative edge. And if you're using that type of elastic, you're going to apply the elastic to the top uh, or to the right side of the fabric and then turn it under. If you're using just a regular elastic like I'm using, I'm going to apply it to the back side first. So um, just another reminder that this is a stabilizing elastic. This is not the kind of elastic that you want to really cinch in the leg line. So which either type, which, whichever type of elastic you choose, um, start with a zigzag stitch. If you're really confident, you can just serge this on, but I like to kind of baste it on with my um, sewing machine first and then serge over top. If you don't have a serger, you can skip that step completely. So basically what your elastic is doing is stopping this leg line from stretching out too much. So here you can see that there's not a huge difference between the side where I've applied the, the elastic and the side that has left been left plain so far. Um, it just basically keeps it from stretching out because when you are working with a bias cut fabric, it does tend to want to stretch back. It doesn't have that resilience, resiliency like something with a spandex or a lycra in it would. So I'm going to do the same thing to the opposite leg and then I'm just going to serge over top to create a nice clean finish. So here they are now that I've surged around my edges and I've also removed any of my basting stitches that were visible. Um, so just again, you can see that this doesn't really cinch in our leg line, it just stabilizes it and stops it from stretching out. Makes them a little bit more comfortable. So now we're, on, we're going to finish this edge and I'm just going to turn mine under and do a zigzag stitch. You can also use a twin needle. So I'm working from the right side of my fabric. I've just turned it under the width of my elastic, which is about a quarter or three eighths of an inch. So that's how it looks once you've turned it under and um, done your top stitching. I actually prefer to finish with a twin stitch, but uh, I don't feel like changing my needle right now, so I'm doing a zigzag stitch. Um, do the exact same thing to the other side, and then we move on to sewing our lace contrast. I've finished up uh, turning under both of my leg lines, and I've given this a quick press, so it's laying nice and flat and easy to work with. I'm taking a piece of my stretch lace that I cut out for my hip contrast and I'm going to begin by working on the front. So take your lace or whatever type of fabric you're working with and uh, put the side front seams together. And if you're working with a scalloped lace like I am, just make sure that your scallop meets up at that half inch seam allowance point um, evenly with the turned edge of your panties front. So we can do a couple pins in here. <clears throat> Sometimes when you're working with a scalloped lace, um, depending on how you've cut it, you might find that it overhangs the top of your um, panties front or your panties back. That's not a big deal. You can just simply trim it back and blend it all together. So. Now that I've got this pinned together, I'm going to sew this together with a half an inch seam allowance and finish my seam with the serger. So just using a straight stitch. When I open this seam up, you can see how nicely that join comes together. So you don't want your lace to be too far down or too far up. You want it just to look continuous 
from your fabric front. If you're having a lot of problems getting this to look nice, you could do a few hand stitches before you run it through your sewing machine. So do the exact same thing on the opposite side of the front and then we can move on to the back. I've got both of my front seams sewn and serged now and I'm ready to sew my first uh, back seam now. So just like we did before with the right sides together, place your lace just like at the beginning so that where it meets at the half an inch seam allowance mark the lace is going to butt directly against this uh, folded edge. So that often means that the this point of your lace is going to extend beyond your back piece. So I'm actually just going to flip this over and pin this together. So at this point we only sew one seam and then I'm going to finish the waist and then finish the last seam. So now we have three of our four seams sewn and finished, whichever way we're finishing them, either with a serger or a zigzag stitch. And before we go on to the elastic waist finishing, just make sure that the edge, the upper edge or the waist edge of your panties meets up evenly at each of your seam points. So that might mean you want to just um, quickly pin together this open side seam and make sure that you're not going to have any overhang from your lace or your back fabric uh, just because it's going to cause problems when we go to sew our final seam. So I'm going to finish this with fold over elastic and if you've done fold over elastic before then this is going to be easy peasy and if not um, it's still going to be pretty easy. <laughs> I've got my sewing machine switched to a zigzag stitch and I'm working on the inside of my garment. I've got my fold over elastic facing up so the shiny side is up towards me and I've placed it so that this fold line is running approximately along the cut edge of my waistline. So I'm going to secure it down with a little back tack and then from here you're going to gently pull on your elastic but not your fabric. So if you're working with a really flimsy fabric like I am, um, it's going to be beneficial, well, be beneficial anyways to work with a walking foot, um, but you just wanna make sure that this bias cut fabric does not stretch out underneath your um, foot as it's going through your sewing machine. If you're having a lot of problems with that, I recommend stay stitching your fabric first. And stay stitching is basically just running a row of hand stitching along the cut edge of your bias cut fabric and that, that thread will basically keep it in place and stop it from stretching out. Keep your tension even as you're going along. Now flipping over to the right side of the fabric, you can see there's places where my fabric really extends beyond that stitching line. So I'm just going to use a pair of really sharp little snips and I'm going to trim back all of the excess fabric as close to my stitching line as possible. And that's going to help my fold over elastic fold nicely. So make sure you do not skip this step. A lot of people ask me why I don't provide um, elastic lengths in my sewing patterns. Um, and I've just found through uh, sewing lingerie for the last um, going on eight or nine years, different elastics can really have a different amount of stretch and resiliency and even between the same type of elastic. So I stock dozens of fold over elastics and each one have a, a little different stretch. So I really hesitate to give um, finish, uh, finish elastic lengths as a hard and fast rule. 
because it's going to vary based on the type of elastic you use, how stretchy your elastic is, and generally the type of fit that you like. So now that I've trimmed back all of my excess fabric, I'm going to work from the right side of my garment, fold the elastic along the fold line, and again use a zigzag stitch to top stitch in place. So it's a lot like sewing a binding. almost done sewing our grace panties. All we have to do is finish this one side seam and clean up any um, loose threads. So to do this, begin by lining up your finished fold over elastic waistline. And you want this upper edge of your fold over elastic to meet up perfectly. So that might mean you're going to do a few hand stitches to keep it in place or use pins or whatever it is you need to do to <laughs> achieve that nice continuous look. Um, and then just like before, we want the lower edge of our scalloped lace to meet up with the folded edge of our leg line so that when we open it up, the whole thing looks continuous. So switching back over to a straight stitch, we're going to stitch this together with a half an inch seam allowance and just be sure to do a really secure back tack. Now you can finish this raw edge with your serger or a zigzag stitch and we'll come back and we'll do the very final step. We've basically completed all of the construction of our grace panties. At this point it's just little uh, finishing details now. So this join here is um, a little unsightly. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press it down towards the center back and I'm going to do a little straight stitch just to tack it in place. This also stitches down my uh, loose serging threads so I don't have to tie them off. This also creates a really secure join. I've already pressed mine um, and I've pressed them so that the seam allowance heads in towards the points in towards the center front or the center back. Um, and from here you may want to do a little tack either by hand or by machine right here just to anchor your seam allowance down so it's not flipping out so that you can't see it um, from your sheer or so that you can't see it through your sheer lace. Otherwise, that's it. Aside from adding any bows or rosettes or trims of your choice, we've done a pair of really cute silk and lace panties. Thanks for watching.